Hello and good evening. Welcome to Stutter Pot TV. I'm your host once again, NJW, and I'm back with Around the World, State to State, in 50 Days episode. Today we're in Florida, y'all. Let's see what's going on in Florida. Crime news. Tonight, a 37-year-old mother is behind bars, accused of leaving her one-year-old son on the beach. Just a tragic story here. Fox 35's Patrick Perez found out the story she told police and her family about why she did it, and it never matched up. This is where deputies say they found four people standing around trying to keep that baby warm. They actually found the baby down at the beach just minutes before they called for help. She took my little brother somewhere. She stayed with his dad, but, and I'm she telling her to show me proof, proof, but she's not showing me proof. A frantic 17-year-old on the phone with 911 just after midnight last Wednesday as she desperately searched for his baby brother. A tone of each police say 37-year-old Shamika Mitchell had parked her car at the so she didn't terrorize her other child because he's looking for his little brother. This is crazy. Like, how do you respond to something like this when this lady done left her baby on a beach because she don't want the baby no more or she's mad at the daddy? That's crazy that you have to go through this as, as a living, living human being. It's crazy, man. At the Greek Orthodox Church on Halifax, she told security she and her children needed somewhere safe to sleep. We all live in Detroit, every single one of us. At one point, the son told police he saw his mother walk away with the one-year-old, and when she came back, the boy was gone. He said he took him to his dad. But the son told police that didn't make sense because the child's father lives back in Detroit. Eventually, officers got a call from Volusia County deputies who found the boy with a group of bystanders near Maine and Ocean. They had been trying to keep the baby boy warm. According to deputies, he was unresponsive with an elevated pulse. His skin was cold to the touch, and he was shivering. Deputies then searched the beach for evidence where witnesses say they found the boy but came up short. The boy was taken to the hospital for treatment, but it's unclear how he's doing right now. As for Mitchell, she remains in the Volusia County Jail facing several charges, including aggravated child abuse. We're in the 20... The crazy part about this episode, this right here is that she was at a church. All she had to do, you can leave the baby at a church, a firehouse, or a hospital without even going to jail. Let me repeat myself. You can leave the baby at a church, a firehouse, or a hospital without going to jail if he doesn't, don't want the baby. She was at a church. She should have just left the baby there. She didn't want the baby. It's crazy. The baby, I hope the baby's all right. On the beach, I'm Patrick Perez, Fox 35 News. Deadly home invasion in Port Orange. We broke this story for you on Good Day Orlando this morning. Police say the homeowner shot and killed a man who was breaking into his home. It happened on Pelham Drive just after midnight last night. Fox 35's Marie Edinger joins us live from the Port Orange Police Station. So, Marie, you spoke to the homeowner this afternoon. Yeah, I did. I went out to that house earlier today and a person there told me he does not have any comment for the media. He added, I'm sure you can understand. Police are still trying to figure out more about what happened. Florida has a stand your ground laws. I'm, I'm pretty sure certain states have them. Not all states have a stand your ground law. So this is just a free kill for this homeowner that was uh, protecting what's his. Port Orange police say someone tried to break into this house around midnight, but the alleged intruder never made it out. Police say the homeowner shot and killed the person as they were trying to force their way inside. You know, shocked. Rachel Kaiser lives right next door. She says she was awake when police say her neighbor pulled the trigger, but she didn't hear a thing. I woke up to the text from my mom going, can you call me when you wake up? And that's how I found out that it even happened. I had no idea. This is Port Orange. You don't expect this. People living in the area told me it isn't just the neighborhood that's normally quiet. It's the entire city. Really, the worst thing that has happened here was Amazon packages get missing like around Christmas time. But, you know, that's... That's nothing. Port Orange police say they're still investigating. They haven't said who the intruder was or whether he has any connection to the neighborhood. 
So even though Port Orange police said today the threat is over, they said no one else was hurt, people in that neighborhood are still feeling a bit on edge. And I'm going to be talking more about that at 630. But I will also mention police clarified today that they are still investigating, but they aren't releasing the name of the person who was killed just yet. They're waiting to notify that person's next of kin about what happened. Live in Port Orange, Marie Edinger, Fox 35 News. This man has now been charged in the death of his niece. The 18-month-old was shot to death at a home in Palm Coast back in September. The Flagler County Sheriff says... Hold on, did he just say this man killed the 18-month-old? What's going on in the world these days? That's why I'm doing a state-to-state -state travel to crime spree to see what's going on in every 50 states. It's crazy. He just shot this... Ugh, I hate this type of stuff. T.J. Nelson Jr. was cleaning the gun when it went off. That bullet then hit the toddler. Fox 35's Chris Lindsay found out that it all happened right in front of the girl's mom. When deputies first showed up, Sheriff Rick Staley says all of the adults on the scene had different stories. Now, after two months of investigating, he says they finally got into the bottom of what happened. C.J. Nelson Jr., DNA and fingerprints were on the gun that we recovered, which is this gun. C.J. Nelson Jr. is the man Sheriff Rick Staley says shot and killed 18-month-old Jalea Allen, his niece. While trying to be, frankly, a punk gangster is what he was trying to be. The sheriff says the toddler was playing with her mother in the hallway while Nelson was trying to clear a jam on his gun. Sadly, Jolia died at the hospital. The sheriff says Nelson was high on THC when it happened. He was still on probation at the time of the deadly shooting. He was not supposed to be in possession of firearms or drugs. This all happened back in September. The sheriff says it took so long to make an arrest because deputies say the people in the house tried to get rid of evidence and their stories of what happened were not the same. There were more interested in frankly saving their than saving the life of a small innocent child or holding a killer accountable for his actions. Deputies are working to charge those other adults. As for Nelson, he's been charged with manslaughter with a firearm. Nelson has been in jail since the shooting, held on no bond for probation violation. The sheriff says he won't have a bond for this charge either. In Flagler County, Chris Lindsay, Fox 35 News. At five, a cruise line bans a woman for life after an incident at the port in Miami. Yeah, she tried to take CBD gummies on board and learned a tough lesson about cruising rules. Fox 35's Chris Lindsay spoke with her today, and he's joining us live right now. So, Chris, she has a warning for anyone sailing the high seas. <laughs> That's right. When you're packing for a trip, it's usually easy to remember not to pack anything illegal. In this case, this woman thought she had done just that. She still ended up in some trouble. I don't deserve something like that to be recorded on my name. Erin Van Veldhuizen was headed on a cruise with her family. When terminal workers looked inside her bag, they found CBD gummies. She says they had no THC at all, and she brought them to help her sleep. And I'm thinking at this point she's just going to destroy it or something. Um, I'm just going to watch her destroy it. Um, I haven't really thought anything of it too much. Instead, then a captain finally came down, and the man said, um, based on the weight of your gun, so they don't follow the baby getting killed when a baby get a woman getting banned. Florida crazy. That means you won't be able to board. They also banned her from taking any carnival cruises moving forward. Cruise expert Stuart Sharon says the incident highlights why it's important to always check the cruise line's website before you pack. The point is they 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 do have certain items that. Okay, well there you have it. That's my state to state Florida episode. Uh, the, the, the two babies incident incidents has really got me emotional so I'm going ahead and end this this episode but thank you guys for joining me I'm NJW once again from Startup Pod TV and I'll see you guys on the next episode I'm going to the next state so follow me